Fulcrum is a mysterious and strange world found at the epicenter of our universe, and it calls upon champions to meet and battle for control. Will you become the champion of Planet Fulcrum? Find out in this game that plays one to four players, it takes roughly about an hour to an hour and a half, and it's for ages 13 and up. In the game Planet Fulcrum, you're going to be starting at a specific location. There are five different types of locations in this map uh, or world, and you're going to be moving Moving around and performing different actions. Certain actions will push you towards certain uh, factions, so to speak, and there's going to be a player board that you'll have that'll push you towards the blue side or towards the red side, and based on the actions you choose will push you that far. And eventually, if you have majority in one way or the other, you'll switch sides, which will let you play certain cards or not play other certain cards. And your objective is to control as much area on the map as possible. When all of the map gets filled, uh, you're going to tally up the points of your map control of all the fulcrum you've been gathering, which is this mysterious energy that lets you utilize it for many different reasons, but mainly to power up your character, as well as a few other little bits and pieces here and there. And if you have the most points, you can win the game and become the champion of the planet. We'll take you down below, show you how to play the game. Then we'll come up and I'll give you my review. And finally, my outro. Welcome to Planet Fulcrum. And here the game is all set up. Let's go ahead and talk about all the things you'll get in the game. First of all, the game board. This is the board you'll be utilizing for the game. It's where your character Characters will start and where you'll need to gather the specific locations in order for the game to end and thusly score enough points to win. Each of the locations has a letter. Place your letter markers on each of them. There's three for each region and there's five regions in the game along with four starting spaces. Each player is going to choose a player board, a morality board. They'll gather a small deck of cards for each of the different player board um, uh, indicators like speed, intelligence, strength, resilience, and energy. Start them all at three. They'll go all the way to five and they will come back all the way to one when you start losing them, which hopefully you won't have to do. You're also going to take a random cube um, of each color from the stack here, and you'll give them each to each player. The player who has blue will start. Each player will gather three fulcra of their color uh, that they chose to from the starting, and they'll place their character on the start space of that location. So for instance, this player got blue. He's the first player. He gets three blue fulcra, and he starts in the blue region that says begin, and everybody else will do the same thing. Thing. Your morality tracker is going to have morality markers. You're going to place each of the markers in a space in the middle of the board in the nomad section um, in each of these four locations here. This will start to show the specific morality of the specific player. Each player is also going to gather three meteor cards from the deck. These will be used for attack as for, and as for, as for defense as well, and occasionally to turn in for additional fulcra, which is your currency in the game. Go ahead and set the rest of the fulcra aside so that everybody can have reach. Uh, any of these extra decks that you will not need can go aside as well. These are the markers you'll use whenever you pick up a specific location. And then, of course, the rest of the extra uh, sets of uh, player boards and morality boards as well. When you're playing the single player version of the game, you'll use this side of the board. When you're playing the multiplayer side of the game, you'll be using this board here. To begin the game, simply go ahead and start by moving. You'll get to move based on your speed to any of the locations that you can make it to. And to move one, you'll go from one area to the next that has that dotted line. So one, two, and three. After you've done your entire movement, you'll take an action, and there are eight different actions in the game. You can do order chaos, you can do honest, you can do um, undermine, passive, aggressive, courage, and fear. Order is going to let you control a vacant location. It'll have a certain cost as far as fulcrum goes and certain requirements. Um, same thing as chaos, but instead of a vacant location, it will be a controlled location. Uh, you're also going to have the ability to gather fulcra, whether it be from the simple area that it resides in or from an outside area. So if I were to go here to gather fulcra, I'd gather them from the other areas of the board. But if I wanted the one specifically for this region, I would go here. Additionally, when you gather fulcra in the middle regions of the specific territories, you can level those specific decks up by paying a certain cost and thusly increasing the value of your uh, specific fa uh, type, energy, resilience, strength, intelligence, and speed, so on and so forth. Over here is a meteor card, so lets you turn in meteor cards and gather more meteor cards, which is also based on um, how many meteor cards you can hold in your hand, which is based off of your intelligence. Uh, you can also defend or attack in battle. When you and an opponent are in the same location, you can choose to defend or attack when it's your turn, and the other player will choose the opposite. You'll utilize your faction bonus, uh, or location bonus, I should say, uh, plus your 
strength bonus when attacking or defense when defending, and any meteor cards in your hand. All that will total up comparatively to your opponents, and the person who wins will gather Fulcroth, the person who loses will lose that specific territory. And you can also choose to take Courage. You can go to an occupied region on the board of another player, provided that you are on a space that has a teleporter. So in this case, if I wanted to use Courage, I can move him to another place that is occupied, uh, just like that. Or I can do the opposite, which is Fear. I can go to an uninhabited location of the board that has one of those teleportation markers. Once you've chosen to move and take one of those actions, then you're going to move your morality tracker. And you'll move the tracker based on how much you spent for the previous action that you took. If you spent three, you'll move one of the markers three spaces towards the side of the action you took. So if you went to control a vacant location, you'd move it that way. If you went to steal a location that was already controlled, you'll move it that way. After you've done that, you'll check to see, has your morality changed? And that's the case if any markers are uh, basically going to have a higher value comparatively to any other location. So in this case, this is a three to one, which means you have now turned into the overlords. This over here would be the a neutral stance, in which case you'll stay what you are. Whenever you do change, like in this case, you'll move all of your faction markers all the way over to the side here. And now you're going to be playing as the overlord. Uh, the same would be said is if you had all your guys here, and you move this to here, this to here, and finally this to here, bam, you would turn into an, a guardian and you'd move all your markers over here. There's certain rules as to why you will do that and uh, what cards you can play in the decks. And given the blue players can play the blue cards, the red can play the red cards. And if you're the highest valued red player, so if you had the farthest markers over here on this red track, you'll turn into the uh, dark paragon. And he has specific rules for himself as well. And you'll be utilizing the specific markers controlling the regions based on what you are for that morality tracker. And you can always change whenever you switch. Uh, you'll eventually be able to change factions. So this would here would turn back into the overlords, which would move you like that. And that's basically the game. After you go ahead and check your morality marker, the next turn will pass to the next player. They'll move. They'll take one of these eight actions. They'll move their morality tracker and rinse and repeat up until the point where all of these locations are controlled. When the locations are all controlled, you're going to score points. You'll score points for each of the different regions that you control. You'll score additional points if you control all three of a specific region. You'll score points for each card in your hand, the meteor cards, and you'll score points for any fulcra that you do not utilize that are on your player board. There's a couple more rules and regulations as to how you're going to be gathering, which you're going to be placing, where you're going to be placing these guys here, uh, as well as, of course, how many different fulcra you can have on your board, which is all indicated down here and explained fairly well. But for the most part, that's how you play the game Planet Fulcrum. Another thing I want to show you guys is the Planet Fulcrum character creator beta. It's on the website and you can actually create your own character for the game. You'll be able to choose from six of the different silhouetted characters here. And when you select one of them, you'll be able to create one for the game. You'll be able to select the skin color for that character and the basic undergarment color as well. And then they have a plethora of different options, anywhere from shoes and socks and underwear all the way to faces and nose. We'll go ahead and give this person a face. You can give them maybe some eyes here, maybe something like that, and a nose. And this is what you can use to actually have your own unique character. I haven't actually seen a game that lets you create a character for it, but uh, this one does a pretty good job of that. It has a bunch of different options as to, oh, well, even, even down to the bracers, you can add belts, and then of course you have your pants here. Maybe you give them a dress, maybe something a little more Matrix style. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, there's, there's a ton of different options for this, and uh, you're able to make a character and you'll be able to print this out to play with in the game. Uh, I'm not sure how the stats and all that work, but uh, as you can see, I just simply made a character here, and I can go ahead and select that character, and it'll give me the option to uh, print out a character and use it for Planet Fulcrum. So it's something I thought would be uh, important to add to the game to show you what you can do. Oh, and as you can see here, it literally gives you a full printout for the character, which is actually really awesome. Uh, we can play it as a character board. And of course, it'll give you a scan code for the Kickstarter coming out in early 2021, which is shortly after this video. And then it also gives you a little character standee that you can cut out as well for your customized character. Anyway, back to the video. In Planet Fulcrum, your most important aspect of the game is selecting which actions you'd like to take on your turn and then moving your morality tracker along you'll be turning into a guardian a nomad or an overlord and on this little board
board here will show you which ways you're going to go. So if you go more towards this area over here, you'll be playing as a guardian. If you go over here, you'll play as an overlord. If you're the person who has the highest values over here, you're going to be playing as the dark paragon, which is basically the big baddie who's able to utilize locations that normally overlords couldn't use. And then the middle here is kind of like the neutral faction. The neutral characters can kind of utilize the most types of cards, but don't control one specific area or another. They're kind of like somewhere in the middle there. Uh, blue players will utilize the defense cards and the red players utilize the attack cards and they all have their own new benefits and uh, disadvantages of course as well. Uh, the actions you take, sometimes you'll have to take uh, one action in order to e change your faction or B because it's something you need to do in the game in order to gather the territories you want move to a certain location, and uh, it, it can cost you in certain ways, whether it be a faction change you didn't necessarily want to make, or whether it be an action you didn't want to make, but you needed to turn into that faction. And so it kind of gives you this like tug of wars, like push and pull style um, game in which you're utilizing everything to the best of your ability, but there's still choices you have to make sometimes where you're not going to want to. It's got a little bit of uh, action in the game as far as aggressive combat. It's Combat isn't necessarily the full aspect of the game, but you will be utilizing these cards here. You will be turning them in to gather fulcrum, or you'll be flipping them over if you're attacking or defending and gathering some type of bonus uh, points. And basically you're you're going to be attempting to uh, secure locations and gather fulcrum when you win or lose territories when you are unsuccessful at defending yourself, etc. And so there's going to be this like back and forth push pull, even when the combat goes, you'll be utilizing the cards and of course your attack, which is represented on your player board here. Uh, each of the different types of locations you'll be moving across the board here are going to give you benefits, right? So speed for orange and intellect and so on and so forth. And so pushing those up is, is important throughout the game. But over Overall, the most important thing is area control, controlling as many territories as you can, and a specific type of control, too. You want to control all the blue areas or all the green areas, because that will get you not only the bonus of having territories, but also a bonus of controlling all the territories in a given region. Uh, utilizing your skills is important as well, moving across the board to gather more intel, to uh, kind of work together with people who are a little farther behind. The game does have this kind of catch-up mechanic where if somebody's pretty far ahead, other players are typically not going to mess with you, and they're going to kind of mess with them. So the game stays relatively balanced as as games go, I suppose, except for, of course, if they need that location that you specifically have, even if you are not in first place, that can uh, result in not so great that happenstance for you. Uh, turning cards in as well will give you Fulcrum, and Fulcrum is basically the currency of the game that you can gather based on the different areas that you move to, uh, which is really cool because you're, you're kind of like doing a whole bunch of everything uh, all in the goal for your area control and territory control as well. Uh, the game itself, uh, quality-wise, is high quality. You're going to be getting a full board, and all the different cards of nice quality. Uh, this was originally, I believe, on the Game Crafter, but has since been moved off of there. And uh, it does have unique differences, uh, which if you remember the old review, which I don't know if you do, it might even be deleted by now. Uh, this one here has uh, gotten some quality of life upgrades. There's tinier cards, which make it easier for leveling up. Uh, you'll be playing with these characters on these little standees, which I actually really like, oddly enough. Um, most people probably like the acrylic standees better, but these do a pretty good job of it. And in my copy of the game, I got multiples of them because obviously they're a little flimsier so if they get messed up you'll have plenty of extra copies to utilize if you need to um, there's also a solo play version of the game when you want to play solo play you flip it over onto this side of the board and it'll give you all the indicated action priorities from left to right which is what you're going to use for the bad guys um, or the AI characters um, and that controls kind of how they do what they do which is a nice way of playing a single player version of the game if you like games that involve area control that involve hand management it's got a little bit of an aggressive combat style, as well as, of course, games that uh, you're kind of gathering resources and determining what skills and abilities are most important to you, while all maintaining which faction you want to stay on at any given point in time, because the factions do make a difference and change how you're going to play, I would definitely suggest checking out Planet Fulcrum. It is a high quality game. I've played this multiple times and have enjoyed it ever since I started for the first time, which I didn't understand the rules as well. Now the rules, especially in this one here, is illustrated very well and I completely understand how to use it. I could just blame Grant for not being able to read the rules correctly. I don't know, but the rules are really easy to understand in this one here. Um, and I had a lot of fun with this one. If you are interested as well, take a look down below. Link in the description for the game Planet Fulcrum. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Planet Fulcrum, which you can find down below. Link in 
the description. Don't forget to also go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. It does greatly help us out and we do greatly appreciate it. You can also go ahead and check out our live streams every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. We stream on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, and you can choose any of those platforms to watch us play games just like the one down below. In fact, we will be playing this one on one of our live streams shortly, and uh, you'll be able to see how the game is played and if it's something for you, so it kind of gives you even more of an idea of if it's something you'd like to pick up. You can also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, all kinds of stuff on there, even reviews for games that we do not cover on the channel here in video form. You'll have it in written form for whenever you're in between work or whatever it is you're doing that you can't actually watch a video, so you have both forms. And uh, we'll be doing a podcast shortly once a month, which will be kind of fun. I'll let you know more information when that occurs. Check out um, our Discord, and if you're interested, our Patreon. It helps us greatly with our live streams, putting out better quality content, higher value quality cameras and lighting and all that kind of stuff. If you've seen our old videos until now, you'll see the difference. Moonshell is underway. I'll be doing updates for Moonshell Mermaid Game, my wife's game. You'll be able to see that um, every day on the notifications. We'll try and do it like once a week or so. Um, right now, we're going to be manufacturing some prototypes from the actual manufacturer as opposed to our handmade copies. So we'll give an update when those get here, which should be actually shortly, maybe in the next couple weeks here. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to controlling Planet Fulcrum without you next time. <laughs>